Pirates are. Hey y'all, my name is Eric Thompson. You may know me as Eric the Red for obvious reasons, and this is my story. Welcome to 6 in Fremont, one of my favorite corners downtown. Pretty much everything you needed for a photographer. You got neon, you got the clubs, you got the pigeons, you got the fancy cars driving by. It's just an overall great spot for photography, especially at night with all the people walking around. One of the hottest spots in downtown. My name is Eric, and I'm an alcoholic. I wasn't much of a drinker until I got divorced, and I quit smoking pot because I thought I was going to grow up and start being responsible for once. It's a little late after my divorce, but I did it anyway. I quit smoking pot, but I went to the bottle because I thought that was the adult thing to do. I started drinking more and more. 15 years went by and I was drinking every single day. So I continued to drink more and more and more and more to try to numb the pain. And then I was drinking so much, I was drinking to die. I wasn't drinking to black out drunk and fall asleep. I was drinking to die. I felt like a huge failure, an embarrassment to myself and the family and the company that I worked for. I started drinking more and more and more. Lost my job due to drinking. I had to move back in with my sister and my mother who was dying at the time. And I continued to drink and drink and drink. It was very selfish for me to drink while my mother was dying and my sister was doing all the work taking care of my mother. Something I regret to this day, but it's something that I did and I'm living with it now. I remember when I knew I needed to quit drinking. There was a point where I needed to stop. I, know, I knew I wanted to stop, I just didn't know how to stop. I was to the point where I was drinking every two hours. I was waking up from a dead sleep and waking up and my body was telling me I needed a drink. So I would crack, crack open a beer and drink at three in the morning and had to be at work at five. One night I was at work and my body just completely cramped up. My hands were frozen to the point where I couldn't even move them and I knew I had to go to the hospital. I made a phone call to my sister, letting her know that I was thinking about going to the hospital because of the condition my, my body was feeling. She convinced me to go to the hospital. She was on her way to pick me up, but I tried to convince her to wait one more day to go to the hospital so I could go home and finish my 12 pack. Needless to say, I went to the hospital and found out I had done major damage to my body. 
major damage to my liver, and it was irreversible. At that point, my daughters walked in and were crying. My ex-wife was there, my sister was there. And at that point, I knew I had to quit, if not for myself, for them. After getting released from the hospital, I knew I was done drinking. I would never go back to the bottle. I never wanted to be in that situation again where something had that grip on me, that death grip. And I let it have it on it. I wanted it to take me. So after I was released from the hospital, I know I needed something to do with my time. Um, I tried drawing, I can't draw. I was taking pictures with my camera phone and I would enjoy doing that, walking around downtown where I live and taking pictures of the various murals downtown, random garbage on the street, just something to keep me busy. When my sister noticed that I was posting pictures to Instagram and enjoying doing that stuff, she reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in maybe getting a real camera. And at that point, I was actually already looking at cameras and I absolutely wanted one, but I could not afford one. My sister was nice enough to buy me my first camera, an Amazon special camera that I used and I loved and I tried to learn everything I could about that camera. I quickly fell in love with photography and the process of photography. One day I was walking around my neighborhood with my camera and I captured an image of a young gentleman on a scooter in front of a mural getting flicked away from the mural off his scooter. That image alone got me addicted to photography like I was addicted to alcohol. I started getting some recognition from Instagram, especially Instagram, DTLV's Instagram. They reposted that picture and the thrill and excitement I got from that picture alone, I will never forget. As something as simple as getting reposted by a bigger page, especially a community page where I live and I really wanted to be a part of that community, gave me the most excitement I've had since my children were born. That changed how I viewed myself as a person. I had a goal, I had a purpose to become not only a better person, but a better photographer. After capturing that image and all the excitement it brought to me, I knew I was addicted to photography and I wanted to learn more. So I started going on Instagram and looking at pages or photos from Las Vegas and I came across some bigger Instagram pages. Um, one of them, Boogie702, was one of the biggest reasons I got into photography. His pictures alone, when I first saw them, when I first started getting into photography, I was blown away at his images. And I was really frustrated I couldn't take images like that. I had no idea that you actually had to edit pictures. Another photographer that really stood out when I first got into photography was Cool Mike. Seeing some of his street photography, his urban photography, the way he captured light, I was in love with those images. And I think that's where my style comes from now. And I really don't have a style. But Cool Mike, his pictures really got me into the street aspect of photography and walking around and taking pictures of strangers, even though he's more of a scene photographer. Then I also found Samuel the Canadian's Instagram page and I fell in love with his hazy image, his dark exposure, just everything that he's doing with the Vegas streets. I wanted to do those types of things. When I first got out there in the street, I was super nervous of taking pictures of strangers. I didn't know if I was gonna get punched in the face. I didn't know how that was gonna be received. 
Um, one part of the success I think I've had with taking pictures of strangers up close, because I do mostly shoot with a 24 millimeter focal length. So I really got to be up close and personal. It's just when I'm out there, it's just have a smile on my face. I'm already pretty goofy. I'm already dancing around, um, smiling. So that positive energy kind of comes off on the people that you're shooting, even if they are strangers. As long as you have a good attitude, they'll probably have one back to you. But the likes, the follows, and the comments kept me motivated to get out there every day and keep shooting and maybe capture another image like I did. But definitely the community that I've gotten on Instagram definitely has kept helped me stay sober with all the positive feedback, um, inspiration. When I first started Instagram, I made it well known that I was a alcoholic. And I think a lot of people were annoyed by that, but I was pushing that on everybody because I almost wanted them to hold me accountable because I was putting it out there like, oh, I quit drinking and photography saved my life. I quit drinking and photography saved my life. If I messed up, I not only was a disappointment to myself, my family, but also the people on Instagram, as stupid as that sounds, in my case, that was true. Going forward with my photography, I've thought about that a lot and I'm not sure where I want to go. I'm having fun just doing what I'm doing now. I'm doing photo shoots, I've done a couple and they're super stressful. I, I just want to have fun and take pictures and take cool pictures. And that is keeping me sober and make, keeping me happy. As far as life, I just want to make it weird while I'm still here. That's all I want to do. I don't have any end goals. I just want to have fun, make people smile, and be weird. <laughs> That's it. That's your story? That's it. I mean, sticking to it? I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I, you know, I really never thought about, you know, because I'm not going to be here much longer. I'm not going to be here much longer. So I, I don't want to set goals that are not reachable. But that shouldn't stop me from setting goals and maybe trying. I don't know. We'll have to see on that one. My sister is a big reason why I'm still sober today. Without her help and support, buying me a camera, buying me a nice little scooter to get around downtown Vegas, I definitely would have fallen off by now. And for that, sister, I thank you. And I love you. <laughs>